Hello again, everybody. Scott Casper, Takedown Media. Our coverage of the sport continues. We head up to, I believe, Waterloo, Iowa. Is that where we find Chuck Yaglet today? Chuck, are you in Waterloo today? Yes, I am in Waterloo. Yes, well, you're going to be heading to Stillwater, Oklahoma. It's been announced that you are going to be inducted in the National Wrestling Hall of Fame as a distinguished member coming up. And uh, first of all, congratulations on that. Oh, thank you. It's a tremendous honor, and I, I'm thrilled. Who made the phone call to you? I got a phone call from Leroy Smith. Leroy Smith. I've I've actually been uh, privileged to make a few of those phone calls to let people know they're going into a Hall of Fame, and and it's always a very special moment. What was it like for you? Oh, it, it was uh, like you said. Yeah, it's a very special moment. I was really excited about it, and actually kind of caught me off guard so it was it was uh great news you've been involved with wrestling at, at, as we've been able to identify at five different levels over the years you started out at columbus high school in waterloo at 63 years old how fresh is that memory of columbus high school <laughs> well it's getting less and less a memory but i but i can still remember my high school days especially the fact that i was not a state champion i get reminded of that often I remember watching you at the high school tournament. Uh, and a five-level career, by the way, involves high school wrestling, college wrestling, amateur wrestling on the international style, and then international style and coaching. Uh, wasn't there some officiating as well? Yes, actually, I was an NCAA official for college. I did that for 24 years. So I think we have to include that as the sixth level then. You're one of the rare breed out there that is actually – uh, been involved in your career at six different levels, affecting the lives of those uh, young people just as you were affected. Let's start with your high school coach, Mike Bach. Obviously, he made an impression on you. Yeah, you know, high school, obviously, that's why well, I actually got started in junior high, but my high school coach, yeah, he, he made a good impression. He was uh, very good at getting us to work hard and on discipline, so, you know, enjoyed a, a fairly successful high school career. Yeah, you were team captain in 1972, runner-up in Class 3A at the Iowa State Wrestling Tournament. That would have been at uh, Vets Auditorium, correct? Yeah, that was in the old Vets Auditorium. That was the quite old, a place. The barn. And uh, I'll tell you what, it was guys like you that uh, put people in seats. There were a lot of fans there watching you as you uh, began to, to turn the heads of college coaches. You moved into the next level of your career when you attended the University of Iowa from 72 to 76, 72 being a magic year, the year that the great Dan Gable uh, won his uh, Olympic gold medal. Um, how fresh is that memory in your first year at Iowa? Oh, oh that's very fresh. Yeah, Coach Gable, obviously, you know, he was a huge influence on my career. So so me coming there in the fall of 72, and, and that's the, the year he arrived too as an assistant coach. Uh, fresh off uh, winning the Olympics, you know, so that was, you know, quite amazing for me to have the opportunity to be coached with him and to work out with him. Prior to his commitment at Iowa, were you recruited then by Gary Kirtlemeyer? Yes, I was actually uh, uh, recruited by Gary Kirtlemeyer. Uh, he was, it was announced he was going to be the head coach. That was for his first year. I was also my freshman year. And so he, he started recruiting me during my senior year of college. You had or, I'm a sorry, senior year of high school. You've had an immediate impact on the team, obviously, but uh, you were awarded captaincy in 1975 and 76. That's a pretty special honor. Yeah, I was, I was honored to, to be a captain there for two years. And, you know, and it was it was a great time uh, for, for Iowa wrestling, getting putting us on the map, let's say. You know, Coach Kirtlemeyer, obviously, he was, he was great at getting things going and and had a lot of great ideas, and, and one of those great ideas, obviously, was getting Coach Gable there. So, you know, I, I feel privileged and honored that I was part of that startup. You know, I, you know, my first year as a national champion was my junior year, and that was the first year we won as a team. So, you know, being part of that history, you know, means a lot to me. We're talking with, uh, well, you're already in the Iowa Wrestling Hall of Fame. Uh, you've been recognized for your efforts as a, as a coach, as a wrestler, as an official. But Saturday uh, on June, June 3rd, you will, be, uh, you will be inducted into the, uh, well, actually, you'll get the presentation of the plaque on Friday, June 2nd in Stillwater, Oklahoma. 
And, uh, and this is a perfect honor for you because you are so deserving. We go on to talk about your extensive career, team captain, as I mentioned, in 75 and 76, but Big Ten runner-up in 74. That set the stage for your champions uh, run in 75 and 76. Both of those years you were successful in, uh, in earning what we call, very, it was very difficult uh, two years, by the way. A lot of people you know, think about who the competitors were. Uh, in those two years as a Big Ten champ and going on to be a two-time NCAA champ. Who were some of those that you competed against that were your toughest competition? Well, my, my junior year, you know, I was a, a freshman at the University of Wisconsin by the name of Lee Kemp, huh. who obviously had an outstanding career. So uh, we, I battled with him uh, my junior year. and Actually, he, he beat me the first time we competed. And then I, I was fortunate to beat him uh, three consecutive times after that in the dual meet in the Big Ten finals and the national finals. So obviously he went on to a great career. And then my senior year, I had a lot of battles with Pete Gallia from Iowa State. Who, sure. You know, over the years, he and I had battled, you know, quite often. I was fortunate to, to get get a chance to defeat him in the, in the finals and nationals my senior year. So, you know, those are the two guys that I think of the most since I wrestled them both in the finals and nationals. Now, one of the other distinguished members that will be uh, honored on that special weekend coming up in June is is Andre Metzger. And I know that you wrestled him at least once. Is that true? Yeah, I, I actually competed against uh, Andre once, you know, prior to the 1980 Olympic trials. You know, I can't remember exactly what, what term it was, but he actually did uh, defeat me the one time we wrestled. Andre remembers every single match and every single minute of every single match. <laughs> the guy has a photographic memory, and he, he still holds grudges to people he lost to. I don't know if you're aware of that. <laughs> I, was, I was not aware of that. <laughs> well, it should be a fun weekend. Uh, Kerry Colat's going in, Andre Metzger, you yourself, sir, Chuck Yegla, and Tony Gazzoni. Uh, so it's, it's an outstanding class. Uh, let's see, Captain Dominic. Pudwell Gorey will get the Outstanding American Award. Greg Hatcher, the Order of Merit, he deserves so much, does uh, Greg Hatcher for the effect he's had on wrestling, not only in the state of Arkansas, but across the board. Thomas Green will get the Medal of Courage. Meritorious official Mike Haggerty, uh, who, if you, you look at Hags as, a, as, a, as one of the top refs and officials in our, in our business, in our sport, I'm just so pleased that uh, he's getting this while he's still... Uh, uh, it's still in action on the mats. I love that. All right, so the next level of your career, um, by the way, I, I'm not going to go past the Outstanding Wrestler of the Tournament in 76. That's a neat award because it's it's picked uh, based on a body of work. And at that championship, you absolutely had the, the eyes of the wrestling public. They were on you. Could you feel that? Oh, well, you know, it, it was... Like you said, that, that's a tremendous award, and I'm very proud of getting that award. Yeah, and I actually, that was a great tournament for me. You know, I had three pins and then a 19-3 to three decision in the semifinals and then beat Pete Gallia 5 to nothing in the finals. So, you know, for me, obviously, it was a great, great tournament. You know, back then, you know, being an outstanding wrestler wasn't something I really thought about very much, you know. And I was the first Hawkeye wrestler to ever be the outstanding wrestler, so it wasn't something that we thought about or talked about, but – you know, I, I was, I'm very happy to be the first one to earn it. And now, obviously, it gets talked about a lot. And, and a lot of guys, you know, that's their that's one of their dreams, one of their goals is to be the out, named the Outstanding Wrestler at the NCAA Tournament. So that, that obviously is, is a great honor. And, yes, I, I remember it well. It's a, it's a rare group of individuals that is, that is in that category, by the way. Level three involves your post-college amateur wrestling career. You made your mark in that category when you won the prestigious Midlands Tournament in 76, 77, and 78. Um, I'm not, I, I can't remember exactly how many three-timers there are, but uh, that's a pretty difficult tournament to win, let alone win three times. Yeah, it, it was a very difficult tournament, especially, you know, it's not quite the same nowadays because you don't get the post-collegiate guys wrestling quite as much. But back in my day, there weren't the opportunities like there are now to wrestle, you know, outside of, you know, in the international. It wasn't international style, but there wasn't the tournaments they have now. So almost everybody that was continuing to compete internationally you know, would show up in the Midlands just to get the competition, even though it was folk style, not, not freestyle. So, yeah, for me to win that three times, yeah, it, that, that was a big deal, too. It's a, it's a great tournament. I love that tournament. I still try to attend it every year to watch. 
So, you know, for me to win that three times in a row, you know, after college was great. I mean, I, I never did win it while I was in college. I competed in it all four years, but but was never able to to win win that championship until after I graduated. Everybody matures differently uh, and at different times and at, for different reasons. Um, some maturity can happen like Logan Stever as he progressed through college. Uh, Kyle Dake, same thing. But uh, for some, it takes that next year or the year after that even. Uh, your level four involves international style wrestling. And, man, you were just starting to blossom. Uh, you went on tour around the world from 72 to 80. Uh, winning many different championships and freestyle events throughout the world. Was there, is there one that stands out for you? Oh, you know, you know, making the world team in 77 and 79, you know, th that was a huge accomplishment for me. You know, I didn't fare so well in those tournaments, you know, but, but having the opportunity to compete in those, you know, was great. You know, I, I had to, you know, lose a lot, a lot of weight to wrestle internationally. It was 68 kilograms, which is 149 and a half pounds. And I didn't always, you know, handle that weight loss as well as I should have in hindsight, but, but being able to compete and make those teams, you know, it was a tremendous honor. And I won the world cup, you know, world cup is a dual meet tournament. I wrestled, competed in that twice, you know, got a silver medal one year and then a gold medal in 79. So, you know, that's a great memory when, when in the world cup, you know, I, I pinned a Russian in my final match. So that's obviously, you know, anytime you can be a Russian, you know, that's, that's a tremendous honor. So, so that, that probably stands out for me, you know, winning the World Cup with a, with a pin in the finals was, was a big deal back then. Our guest, Chuck Yangula, he's in the Nike hot seat today. He'll be inducted into the National Wrestling Hall of Fame on the Friday, June 2nd, celebrating on June 3rd, the following Saturday. Uh, the next level of your career, uh, absolutely, um, and, I'm, and I'm surprised you didn't stay in it longer, and that was as an assistant wrestling coach at your alma mater, the University of Iowa. Um, thank you, by the way, for your contribution, but as you were continuing to compete, you also started coaching. What was that like for you? Well, you know, that was another great opportunity for me. I, I, I went right from being a student athlete, you know, to an assistant coach at the University of Iowa, which at the time, you know, was the, the best program in the country. So, you know, it was, you know, for me, just a great opportunity to go, you know, from being a student athlete to assistant coach at the University of Iowa. You know, most guys would have had to go a different route and, you know, go coach high school for five or 10 years and then work into college. So I was very fortunate to be able to jump right in and, and be assistant coach at the University of Iowa. I did that for five years. Uh, we won the national tournament all five of those years. You know, we had a guy, head coach, obviously, by the name of Dan Gable. You know, I, I sat there thinking, well, I'd like to be the head coach. Since I was assistant coach at Iowa, I'd like to be the head coach at the University of Iowa someday. But I, I understood it would probably be a long wait. Uh, coach Gable, had he was six years older than me, so, you know, I'd have to wait a long time until he would uh, give up those reins. So I looked around for some other head coaching opportunities. There weren't a lot, you know, back then in wrestling, not a lot of turnover. So I just made the decision to get out of coaching and, and move back to, to my hometown here in Waterloo and, and started uh, actually in a banking career at that time. And and are you still in banking or are you in insurance? Actually, I, I work for a company that designs and builds uh, banks and credit unions. So I, I worked 13 years at a bank and then went to a, a local company here. Actually, the owner is a uh, former wrestler named Bob Buckley, and he actually he's on the, the board of the Hall of Fame, and I kept in contact with him. He went to the competing high school uh, of mine, West Waterloo, and uh, I just kept in contact with him, and, and my background in banking, you know, worked well for me to, to transition into actually being a business development sales guy for this company. It's called Kurt Gross Company. We design and build uh, banks, mostly in Iowa, but the surrounding states in the Midwest. Chuck Yagla, our guest. I've been uh, fortunate enough to call Chuck friend for a long time. And uh, tell you what, we cannot offer uh, congratulations to Chuck nearly enough for all he's done. I do want to touch on your officiating career because, uh, quite frankly, I think your impact on the sport is felt uh, through your years as an official uh, and, and thoroughly, uh, you, you've been able to officiate at some of the, uh, greatest events in the country. How did your officiating career even start? Well, that, that kind of dovetailed back into me getting out of coaching when I decided to get out of coaching and, and start my job in banking. I wanted to keep involved in wrestling, you know, somehow. So I decided, well, I always liked, you know, my knowledge of the rules and thought, you know, was always interested in keeping up on the rules. So I decided, well, gee, maybe I could, maybe I could be an official. So again, my background helped me, 
you know, back then you didn't have to actually be certified to be a college official, which people don't really think that's crazy, but that's the way it was. And uh, so I knew a lot of the college coaches. So I, I knew a lot of the coaches in the Iowa conference, Wartburg, Luther, you know, Loris, those colleges, and obviously knew the UNI coach and the Iowa coaches and, and the Iowa state coaches. So I just told them I was going to start refereeing and, you know, they were willing to hire me, you know, right out of the gate, you know, not for obviously any, any real big important things, but, but then that just got me involved and, and started doing that, you know, on the weekends and, and fell in love with it and then just continued on as a, a long career as an official, which I, I thoroughly enjoyed. National Wrestling Hall of Fame is going to get a good one June 2nd and 3rd as they recognize the great Chuck Yegley. Chuck, it's always good to talk to you. Congratulations on your success. I'm sure you and your wife will enjoy the weekend down in Stillwater. Uh, try to stay away from any tornadic activity if you can. I remember uh, a few years ago, the, the big twister that hit uh, down in that neck of the woods. I was leaving town early. And I could see the storm building in my rear view mirror. And boy, did it get bad. And I tell you what, uh, everybody, I was worried about all my friends at the Hall of Fame who were uh, in the basement, I think, at the uh, dorms across the street. <laughs> so a safe trip to, to Stillwater. Uh, again, congratulations on the honor, my friend. So well-deserved. And we appreciate all you've done for the sport and continue to do for the sport of wrestling. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Scott. I appreciate what you guys do for the sport and uh, looking forward to my time in Stillwater. For Takedown Media, I'm Scott Casper. Our special guest in the Nike hot seat today has been Chuck Yeager.